I'm on the phone today with Chef Hugh Atkinson, who is a two-time James Beard uh, Award winner and a top chef. And I just am so excited to ask him a few questions about the Newman's Own Greens for Good campaign. So, Chef Atkinson, what um, what's the Greens for Good campaign all about, and how did you get involved? You know, Newman's Own is, is just such a fantastic company. It's given so much security over the years. And now it's for the 35th anniversary. They're, uh, they're just having people take one of their salad dressings, many, many choices there. And uh, the best salad made with that salad dressing um, gets the opportunity to direct $35,000 of a donation to the charity of the winner's choice. So it's just a pretty cool, uh, uh, you know, Another way of giving back for Newman's Own, thing is I've given almost half a billion dollars to charity already since their inception. That's fantastic. And what kind of salad did you make for the campaign? Um, you know, for the campaign, I made just a really simple tomato salad with the uh, original Newman's Own dressing, uh, which is the dressing that Paul made in his basement and kind of started it all off. That's and, awesome. yeah, my, my salad had a uh, crisp crisp farro in it, and uh, then cucumbers and tomatoes, and just really, really simple and straightforward, but has a nice sort of crunch with the farro, and then it had some arugula, and uh, and the family recipe Italian vinaigrette. Sounds wonderful. I love adding grains to salad, so can't wait to try that out. Uh, Do you feel like people are eating more veggies these days? Do you feel like the farm-to-table trend has has helped encourage people to eat their veggies? Yeah, I mean, I think that we're on the right path. I don't think we're there completely. Uh, I think that we've got a lot of betterment of our food society to do. Uh, The last 60 years has kind of led us to uh, be buying into a food culture, which uh, is is kind of a little processed for our liking. So, you know, this this impetus to get people eating more vegetables is, uh, you know, salad dressing is a great way of doing that. And uh, I think that the encouragement is people to buy into their locality and their community and understand the food ways within their community only helps people get more in tune with better living and, and, a, and a healthier diet overall. But, yeah, I think we're on the right path. That sounds good. Um, what charities do you support in particular? Is there anything that's near and dear to your heart? Yeah, I support a charity called Wholesome Wave, um, and I supported it on Top Chef Masters initially when I competed, but then we we supported them uh, heavily throughout the years. And uh, it's founded by Michelle Michon, and it's based in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and their main aim is to uh, get uh, the tables of the less fortunate more filled with vegetables and, and good food options overall. So they do that by uh, their main uh, way of doing that is by doubling the worth of food stamps and uh, WIC subsidies at farmers markets, which is just a great way of thinking about how to address these issues. Oh, that's a great idea. That's fantastic, actually. Um, What is your favorite Newman's Own salad dressing? I mean, I think the the original family recipe Italian sort of to me, it's just got a purity of flavor, and it, it, it it's just a really versatile vinaigrette. Um, the other thing is it kind of, when I use it, I really think back to the core beliefs of what Paul Newman started. And I don't think he ever thought it would grow uh, to the level that it's grown after his passing. Uh, but uh, it's just a, an amazing tribute to a, a very charitable person and just an empathetic human overall. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, so obviously you're using Newman's own dressing on salad. Do you have other ways that you like to use it? Yeah, I mean, mostly in salads. Um, but you know, we use, we use the ranch at home and, uh, the, the, the original recipe one. And, uh, so there's, there's a lot of different ways. You, they just, it adds flexibility to your pantry, um, and gets, gets you on the right path to feed your family really well again. Mm-hmm. And I know you're a parent. Um, what can you tell parents about how to get their kids to eat more veggies? Do you have any secrets? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the vegetable fight at dinner is, is something that nobody likes to do. So I think that you start them at a young age and you uh, you just present vegetables as a regular part of the diet. And it's just a regular part of dinner. And there's, I wouldn't make much fuss or fanfare about it. Um, I don't like the idea of 
ostracizing one side of the plate and saying you have to eat all of that or you can't leave leave the table. Um, when we did, when my parents did that, it meant the dog was very well fed. The dog was very <laughs> healthy. Um, so you know, but my kids, you know, they still love fast food occasionally and things like that. But they also, uh, they're ten and twelve now, but they will eat okra and cabbage and tomatoes and peppers and whatever really I put in front of them. And that's just because it's in their regular routine. Vegetables are not a special occasion in our house. It's just, uh, it's what they eat every day. Mm-hmm. Um, what kinds of things do you pack in your, your kids' lunch boxes? You know, from a young age, they start eating salads and stuff for lunch often. So they'll make their little salads and have a little side of vinaigrette off to the side and dress that at school later on. Um, you know, carrot sticks are, are, are snack of choice. I think that uh, you want to get away from uh, really sugary snacks and things like that that aren't really filling the tummy in the proper way to give a kid a good good energy boost to lasting through the end of a school day. Um, you know, it's a long day at school, so you know kids pay attention when they're well fed, and uh, I think that we, I think every kid in this this country deserves that chance to be to be well fed and to pay attention to school, and we we get a better generation. I couldn't agree more. Um, do you guys have a favorite go-to meal at home? Yeah, I mean, I think that the southern staple of a roasted chicken with rice and gravy is kind of our go-to meal when I have time mm-hmm. to do it, which is most often when I'm home. Um, but then matched with that is going to be a beautiful bountiful salad and succotash and right now sliced tomatoes and radishes and little baby tiny turnips and steamed mm. carrots. So it's a big spread. And the protein element that was the prototypical idea of a southern meal has been reduced to half the plate, from half a plate to maybe a quarter of the plate. And the rest is this beautiful surrounding vegetables. That sounds fantastic. Um, for all our, our top chef fans, um, for you, was it more fun to, to compete or is it more fun to be a judge on top chef? I think both of them were a lot of fun. The franchise is really fun to work with. Um, it was a lot more stressful competing. Judging is pretty, <laughs> pretty easy. You just sit down and pass judgment on a plate of food um, and hopefully do it with a respect and understanding. And I feel like I can do that pretty well, given the fact that I did compete. And then, uh, you know, I, and this is my vocation and what I do every day. And it's what we think about. So. I think we do it with uh, respect towards what they're going through, but also not shy away from, uh, you know, saying how you really feel about a plate of food. Right. And um, can you tell us a little bit about what's on the horizon for you? I know that you're an, an author, you're on TV, you're interviewed all the time, you have several very well-known restaurants. What's next? You know, we finished up Top Chef in Boston, and most of the season's in the bag, so now we just have to uh, do finales, and so that's coming up. I've got a new book coming out in about eight months that I've just submitted, and that is called The Broad Fork, and it's a uh, look at how to use your CSA box and shop at your farmer's market and use all the strange vegetables that pop up in our in our wonderful agrarian world. Um, and then just working on restaurants, just opened up a great restaurant in Savannah, Georgia, called The Florence, and uh, having fun with it. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today. And I know the readers of A Spicy Perspective will be really, really excited to hear from you. Well, great. Well, have fun in Nashville. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.